Okay, Math Tens, we are doing our last lesson um, in the chapter on numbers. And this lesson, remember, I had mentioned from lesson five, it just is going to continue with radicals. The nice thing about lesson seven is um, it just takes the concepts that we learned in lesson six and we're just going to be applying those identical concepts to lesson seven so there's really going to be nothing new and a lot of you will hopefully try uh, fly through this lesson okay so on page 49 of your student workbook so the first question um, on page 49 i just want to see which one i want to start at Okay, so I'll actually start at this first question here. Now, I am not going to use the method that they show in the textbook. What I am going to do is the method that I taught you for reducing radicals. So if I give you this entire radical and I say simplify this to a mixed radical, how are you going to do that? So what we learned is, okay, we're gonna break down that 54 by the product of its primes. So two, three, five, seven, 11. So take your calculators, take the number 54 and divide it by its lowest prime, which is two. And you will get 27 as an answer. Take 27 and that's not gonna be divisible by two. So 27 divided by three is nine. And nine divided by three is three. So rewrite the third root of 54. That is equal to the third root of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, now what do we do here to simplify this? This index tells you what you circle. So in lesson 6, the index was only a 2 and we circled pairs. Now, in lesson um, 7, I'm going to put give you an index other than 2. So just circle that index. That's a 3. That tells you to circle triples. So go through and circle any triples that you see. For every any triple, all 3 get crossed out and you only ever take out 1. So 3 comes out. What I have left over is the third root of my radicand is 2. So three and the third root of two. So essentially what I'm saying is the third root of 54 is my entire radical. That simplified into a mixed radical is equivalent to this. Let's check on our calculators. So math button, uh, number four, the third root of 54 is equal to three and the third root of two and we're correct. Okay, for number, class example number one, um, I'm not going to do, I won't give you negatives inside the radical sign, uh, but I would, this one's fair and this one's fair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do B with you, and then you're gonna attempt A and you're gonna just check my answer, okay? So let's break down 320. So type in 320 on your calculator, divide it by two, divide that by two. So 320 divided by two is 80, or sorry, is 160. 160 divided by two is 80. 80 divided by two is 40. 40 divided by two is 20. 20 divided by two is 10. 10 divided by two is five. The fifth root of 320 is equivalent to the fifth root of one, two, three, four, five, six twos, four, five, six twos, and one five. Okay. Fifth root tells you to circle groups of five. Again, for every group of five, you cross them all out. How many do you think I'm going to say to take out? the answer is only ever one. Take out from every group of five that you circle, one number will come out. What's left over must stay under my radical sign. And don't forget, if this is a fifth root, this is a fifth root. Two times five is 10. Okay? I want you to attempt, uh, try number A on your own. The third root of 6,000, remember you circle groups of three. 
that index tells you what to circle. For every group of three, cross it out and take out one number. If you did this answer correctly, you should get 10 and the third root of 6 should be your answer. Okay? Okay. This is going backwards. Uh, so let's go backwards. We've already done this actually in the last lesson. Um, I'll give you a different one first. So if I gave you 5 and the third root of 2, and I said, okay, what would that's a mixed radical, what would that entire radical be? You would say, okay, if they wanted this entire radical, everything has to go under a radical sign. How they got that 5 was 5 to the power of 3 times 2. Don't forget, if this has an index of 3, we must continue that index down. The answer would be 5 to the power of 3 times 2. which is 250, so the third root of 250. Okay, let's do the one they gave us. Let's go backwards for this radical. So that one half is a fraction. I'm putting that guy in a bracket. Then I need to get that underneath a radical sign. So that one half has to go underneath a radical sign, and I need to put it to the power of 3 times 80. If this is a root 3, this must be a root 3. Now I just have to go to my calculator and calculate what 1 half to the power of 3 times 80 is. So open bracket, 1 over 2, close bracket, power of 3, scroll out that guy times 80, 10. This answer is the third root of 10. Okay, so the same thing, you guys, as the last lesson. I really have not taught you anything new. Okay, convert the following mixed radicals to entire radicals. Okay, so easy, right? How did they get that 2 out of there? 2 to the power of 4 times 3. Bring down that. Type that in your calculator. 2 to the power of 4 times 3 is the fourth root of 48. We have a negative in front. What do we do with negatives in front? We rewrite it. Negative 1 times 4 and the third root of 7. Okay, how did that 4 get out of the radical sign? You've got to put it back under. Third root, 4 to the power of 3 times 7. And don't forget to bring down that negative. This answer is negative the third root of uh, 448. Okay, this guy, fractions, C, go in brackets. How did they get two-fifths? Well, two-fifths to the power of three. Third root, third root, times by my radicand. Um, I'll show you how to enter that if you're a little bit confused. Two-fifths to the power of three times 100, open bracket. 2 divided by 5, close bracket, power of 3 times 100. 6.4. They usually don't like decimals underneath your radical sign, so go back to math one fraction. 32 over 5. So this is equal to... 32 over 5, the third root of 32 over 5. Last guy, this is the same thing as negative 1 times 3 times the fourth root of 2. How did they get that 3 outside of the radical? 3 to the power of 4 times 2. Don't forget that negative 1 needs to stay. Oh, and... Actually, I'll continue my mistake and see if you guys could find it. 3 to the power of 4 times 2. If you type that in your calculator, you'll get 162. Okay. Then i got to bring down that negative. If you box this in, I would take off a minus 1. So this would probably be out of 3 marks. Who here can see what my mistake is? If this is a fourth root, that's a fourth root. 
that's a fourth root. Okay, I'll be really strict on that, and I won't be taking off a minus 0.5 or something like that. That will be a minus 1. Okay, let's do letters. Don't be scared of letters. Letters, you guys, um, in math are called variables. And this is going to be 20-1. Remember I said there's a, an entire unit on radicals and sometimes variables scare students. But if you followed my method from like the previous podcast and this podcast, it is so easy. You guys will laugh at how easy this is. Okay, let's do this. A to the power of seven. What that is, is the letter A seven times four, five, six, seven. Then you say, well, what's my invisible index? Well, it was a two. What does that index tell you to circle? Well, it tells you to circle pairs. Every pair, how many A's get to come out? Only ever one. What's remaining must stay under the radical sign. Now, what is A times A times A? It is not 3A, you guys. It's not 3A. A times A times A is A cubed times root A. Okay? I'm going to do D with you, and then I want you to try B and C. So if I did D, how would I do this? x to the power of 7 is x 7 times. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. My index is a 3. The index tells me groups of 3 I need to circle. For every group of 3, I only ever take out 1. What's remaining must stay under my radical sign, and it's an x. Now, some of you will want to say, okay, I know that x times x is x squared, and you're right, root x. You would be wrong. What am I missing? If this is a 3, I got to put a 3 there, and I got to put a 3 there. So it would be x squared times the third root of x. Take a minute and pause it. See if you could do b and see if you could do c. So write down nine t's, circle groups of two. Write down five x's, circle groups of three. So do that, and then I will give you the answer. Okay, the answer for b was t to the power of four root t. So pat yourself on the back if you got that right. The, oh, this one's kind of, in, let, let's do this one together. This is the third root of five X's, four, five. I would circle um, a triple, cross it out, because I only have one triple, and I only ever take out one. What I'm left with, under my radical sign, don't forget that third root, is an x times an x, and an x times an x is an x squared. So that's actually your answer for C. Okay, let's do two of these together, and then you guys will do the other two. And like, you guys, if you could do this, you will get any question I give you on a test right, you will get math 20 right, because this is essentially math 20 questions. Um, okay, I'm going to do this guy. No. I'm going to do B and D with you. So 18 is 2 and 9, 3 and 3. So 18 breaks down to 2 times 3 times 3. And then my x's, I've got three of them. So I just rewrite it, break, break down the number like we always do, break down the letters. Then 
check what your index is. So my index is 2. That tells me to circle pairs. For every pair, take out a number and a letter for every pair. What's left over is my radicand. So 2 times x is 2x. So my answer is really 3x root 2x. That simple. Let's do this last one, 40. 40 is 2 and 20. 20 is 2 and 10. 10 is 2 and 5. OK, so this would be, this is going to be long. I'm going to do it down here. Actually, no, I'll just erase this. OK, so the third root of, so watch how long this one's going to be. Um, 40 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And 4x's and 9y's. Woo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Now I go to my index. It says circle groups of 3. Group of 3. Group of 3. Group of 3. Group of 3. Ah, all my y's come out. Okay. For every group of 3, what do we do? What's left over is the third root of, what do I have left? I've got a 5 and an x. So 5x stays under. That's my radicand is 5x. Simplify this for me. 2 times x times y times y times y. 2x y cubed times the third root of 5x. That would be your answer. <laughs> okay. You try, please, A and C. I'm going to give you the answers. In, like you pause it right now, and then you check, and I'll give you the answer. Okay, answers. I get for A, x to the 3, y squared root y. That's the answer for A. For B, I get 4 y cubed z to the 4 times the square root. My radicand should be 2y. So check that you got A and C correct. If you got A and C correct, you guys are good to go. Um, I will give you your homework. So for your homework, uh, flip. To, we won't go in reverse. We'll do that in 20-1, so we won't do number 5. Um, okay, I'd like you to circle uh, number 1, A, C, E, F. And remember, you're breaking it down. And then you're going to circle triples. Every triple, take out 1. Here, you're going in reverse. Um, so circle A, B, E, F. And actually, I should give you a negative, a couple negatives. Circle D and H. So how did they get that 2 outside of the radical sign? 2 to the power of 4 times 2. And then put that, oops, the index is not 2, it's 4. 4th root of 2 to the power of 4 times 2. And then you just have to evaluate this. For your negatives, remember, this is negative 1 times 10, third root of 5. Negative 1 times a third root of 10 to the power of 3 times 5. And evaluate what 10 to the power of 3 times 5 is. Circle number 5, this is equivalent to, just punch that in your calculator, get what the decimal is. This is just going to be a guess and check. Figure out what that decimal is, and then punch each of these in. 
whatever decimal matches is the answer. Ooh. Seven. I'm going to add because that's a good exam question. I like this one. And then I've got number nine I want you to do, which is the letters, which is what we just did, and number 10, which is what we just did, simplifying. Okay? And that's your homework. So we need to add, I'll add number seven. <laughs> 